know how to work it now. Hello, my name is Bianca Swift, I'm from Burke High School, and this is Speak From Your Soul, But Not Really. Speak from your soul. Tell us how you really feel, but don't shout, don't stutter, don't curse, and don't say anything you're not supposed to. If you're 16, don't use a 19-year-old's vocabulary, and if you're 23, don't complain like a 90-year-old. Express yourself, they say. Yet here they are judging the contents of my truth, weighing it against my life like they know me. That's not really you. Well, how do you know? How can you come and tell me I shouldn't use words like colloquialism, purgatory, perturbed? If you must know, I seek solace in those words. Those words you say I shouldn't know because they are larger than two syllables. You tell me to be myself. You want to talk about old issues and on my hair, you question me. If you must know, my life isn't just flowers and dandelions. Why would you allow me to be a Venus flytrap? Ensnaring you in my words the only way I know how. You say I jump around. What if that's how I talk? What if I flip through different conversation topics like I'm channel surfing? And by the way, I'd rather watch the news than the latest period drama. It's not real, you say. What about my last name? Is that real enough for you? Because the last name Swift has gotten itself printed across countless amounts of newspapers and TV screens because I am the news, or at least my family is. I grew up fast because everyone else around me refused to. I write big words because I feel big words. My brain is a teleprompter and I'm just typing you the locutions. So now it's time for you to keep up with me. Find yourself a thesaurus, a dictionary, Google it. Get out your cell phones, take out your tablet, open your ears, because I'm about to go all dialectal on this. It seems to me that ignorance has become the indigenous to your cerebral cortex, you ignoramus. It seems that your larynx that vociferates whenever you're incorrectly putting me down falls mute when my vovosness leaves you incoherent. It's like my declarations are vermicide for those bothersome pests and your encephalon because when I see water, I see the life force of homo sapiens. My ethereal being molded from the simplest thing in the universe. I see the world sculpted in a gelatinous mixture of hydrogen and oxygen, constantly shifting, changing. I see us all condensed into 89% exactly the same. Our differences are erased by torrents of liquid life, waterfalls of human beings, tsunamis of muscle and tissue that are carbon copies of the person sitting right next to you. When I see trees, I see the bringers of a life force, the birthers of life as we know it. I see interspecies mothers wrapping their willow arms around their children in a blanket of oxygen. Selfless individuals that provide fuel for both body and brimstone, I see the only truly eternal beings from the beginning of Genesis to the end of life as we don't yet know it. You say to speak for my soul, but what you fail to realize is my soul runs on a diet of far-fetched descriptions and long-winded comparisons. My soul is dog-eared pages of memory duct taped together by those big words I'm not supposed to know. My soul and my brain are connected by evanescent threads of knowledge, a patchwork of that sew together a patchwork quilt of snapshots from my 15 years of life. And last time I checked, photobombing was a recent trend. Yet you judge me with only half a chapter of the three-part extended edition, pictures included, no hard spot, unfinished trilogy that is my life. You want me to speak from my soul? Fine. But don't blame me if it's in dialect you don't understand. 